Johnny drink. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Cinema Therapy. I'm Alan Seawright. I'm a filmmaker, and I need therapy. I'm Jonathan Decker. I'm a licensed therapist, and I love the movies. And today, I thought we would conduct a little experiment. Yeah? I'm going to show you a film, and you are going to react to the themes in that film. Therapist reacts. Okay. Boom! Boom. We're going to be talking about co-parenting Ooh. in sort of mixed families. Yeah, I like it. What's the film? Ant-Man and its sequel, Ant-Man and the Wasp. <laughs> okay, so I, I actually love these films. I think they're underrated as far as Marvel films go because they're just fun. Yeah. But I, I really do. So Scott Lang is Ant-Man, uh, played by Paul Rudd, and he's divorced. Daddy! Peanuts! Oh, happy birthday! And he doesn't like the guy his ex has married and the guy who's now raising his daughter. And so they're trying to make all that work. And that's actually very relatable. Like. All the sure. other fantasy stuff is fun, but this is the part of the story that is so common. The whole blended family thing is so common. I myself am a member of three blended families. I'm gonna go tell mommy you're here. Oh, you don't, what are you doing here? I haven't paid a dime in child support. You know, right now, if I wanted to, I could arrest you. It's good to see you too, Paxton. Mommy's so happy you're here. She choked on her drink. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do I have for you? Can I open it now? Of course, sweetheart. It's your birthday. <laughs> you are my bestest friend. What is that thing? He's so ugly. I love him. <laughs> I, I have a friends? kid just Good like that. Go ahead. He yeah, loves monsters and just weird, horrible things. So Paxton is the stepfather. Yep. Scott, of course, he didn't get the invitation, and there's this whole thing with with child support, right? You haven't paid child support, so you're not welcome here. Right. And this is where we're automatically seeing what far too often happens is a power play. Mm -hmm. Now, all sides are valid. I want to see my daughter no matter what. Hey, you're a parent. Help support this young, this young girl. Sure. But right now, everyone's kind of drawing hard lines and everyone's doing whatever they want. Mm -hmm. right? and, and, and it's more about the power dynamics between the parents than what's good for the little girl. Right. Right? Who obviously loves her dad. He's obviously, he obviously loves her and cares about her. Right. Is, is in tune with her <laughs> weird little monster she's desires, into, yeah. you know? Right. And, and I'm not saying, I mean, Scott's here because of her, and it is good for her to see her dad on her birthday. Look how happy she is. My yeah. point is, there is not any sort of synergy or mutual respect between the parents right now. Right. It's, it's not in a good place, and it's this tug of war. And Paxton, you know, he, he seems to be a pretty devoted stepdad. It's your birthday, sweetheart. You can open it. Yeah, he's a good guy. It, it's like when you're playing basketball, and you're kind of th throwing elbows at each other and jockeying each other around over who's the father figure in this little girl's life. Because Paxton wants to be a father figure. He wants to be there for her, but he doesn't have a lot of respect for the biological father. Sure. Which, granted, he's been in jail, but still, that's, that's our dynamic right now. Look, the child support is coming, all right? It's just hard finding a job when you have a wreck. I'm sure you'll figure it out, but for now, I want you out of my house, no, wait, okay? It's my daughter's birthday. It's my, my house. So what? what? It's my kid. You can't just show up here. You know that. Come on. Underrated Judy Greer. Yeah, We're both fans. I know, but you can't just show yep. up. He's my daughter. You know right? the first thing about being a father. Maggie, I tell you this as a friend and as the first love of my life. Your fiance is an ass hat. He's not an ass hat. <laughs> language, okay? Oh, what Give language? Yeah. Give me a said minute. hat. Stop it. <laughs> really, Maggie? That guy? Come on, you can marry anyone you want, and you have to get engaged to a cop? At least he's not a crook. Ouch. I'm trying, okay? I've changed it. I'm straight. I've tr I had a job, and I want to provide. I had a lot of time to think about it, and I love her. Yeah. So much. I've missed so much time, and I want to be a part of her life. What do I do? Get an apartment. Get a job. Pay child support. And then we will talk about visitation, I promise. You're her hero, Scott. Just be the person that she already thinks you are. Get a job. Pay child support. We'll talk about visitation. It's tough. Yeah, and he's watching his little girl with somebody else being a father figure. It's hard on her too. Yep. Now I wouldn't say those are unreasonable demands, 
you know, and actually I, I don't want to weigh in because everybody's situation is different, but on the surface of it, you really relate to Scott because he's the protagonist. And it's like, well, can't he at least see her? Come on. While he's Have working. Have a heart. Yeah, yeah, right? But there's the real side of this too, which is if somebody's not pulling their weight as a parent, you really feel... Sure. I mean, the facts of the case are he's a deadbeat, right? Yeah. At least at this point. At this point, yeah. So one of the things that I love about this film that's that I find really, really underrated is the movie contrasts Scott's relationship with his daughter with Hank Pym, mm -hmm. uh, his relationship with Hope. We don't have time to screw Hope, around. Please, he is listen a criminal. To me, please. I'm your daughter. No! Scott learns an awful lot about how he can be a better father by watching these two yeah. you know, interact and learn and grow. And they're not without their issues. Oh, absolutely. Tons of <laughs> issues. Everybody likes this movie because, oh, it's the Marvel movie where they don't blow up the entire planet. It's kind of a little heist movie. Yeah. The stakes are fairly low. And Paul Rudd's funny. And, and Paul Rudd's charming as ever. And under all of that, the screenplay for this movie is really, really tight. And part of that is down to, you know, this was originally written by Edgar Wright, who is my favorite filmmaker. Yeah. The plot works beautifully. Mm -hmm. The characters all have interesting arcs that are emotionally satisfying and and make sense. Yeah. And that's that's really hard to do in any movie, much less a superhero movie. Yeah. But that's, you know, and I think when Judy Greer talks about <clears throat> what he needs to do to have visitation, that sets up his entire motivation for the whole story. That's, and, every, and everything that he tries to do yeah. is to be the hero that she believes him to be. Right. And to be able to be in her life and to make up for the things he's done. And why I really I like Scott Ling is, I mean, I, I, I love, all straight up, I love Captain America. I love the pillar of virtue. Sure. I think we aspire to be Captain America. We relate to Scott Ling. Absolutely. I, th I think we all kind of feel broken, kind of feel like screw up sometimes, kind of feel like we've messed everything up by doing stupid crap and now we got to fix our own mess. Strip away all the superhero trappings of it. It's a very relatable story. Yeah. So we've gone through the whole story and he's gone subatomic. And the thing that brings him back is hearing his daughter's voice. Even now. <laughs> all right. Is she all right? Yeah, she's fine. Mama. But there's obviously been a transformation in the Paxton character as well. Yeah. She's fine. Because he let she's fine. Scott go. Yeah. Instead of handing over to the cops. So I won't go too far into this, but when I first married my wife, she was married before. And the marriage didn't work out, but he, he's a great father. And there was some weird energy and some jockeying for position, like when I came onto the scene, kind of like measuring each other up type thing. I can't imagine how that wouldn't happen. Right, right. right. Like, and he- Seems inevitable. And I, I don't, I can't speak for him. I certainly perceived my perception of it was a, a worry that I was going to try and crowd him out. Right. I never refer to myself as a father of my stepson. I refer to him, I'm a parent, sure. right? And people say, well, don't call him your stepson, he's your son, because if you call him your stepson, then he's gonna feel like he's different, he's, he's just like one of the other kids. And I remember I said to my kid, I said, so when my wife was pregnant with our first together, and I said, so we're gonna have a new baby and there's gonna be other babies and they're gonna call me dad, you know? What do you wanna call me? What do you wanna call me? And far too many people make the mistake of saying, this is, you're gonna call him dad. He is your dad now, or you're gonna do it. And, and kid, the kids have been through enough upheaval and change as it is. Well, you gotta give are... them something that's in their control, in right. their hands. And they're smart. Yeah. Like we treat kids like they're dumb. They're not dumb, they're inexperienced. Yeah. They're just as smart as you and me. <laughs> More so. Smarter, <laughs> yeah. But Everyone's smarter than And he says, he says, I want my daddy to be my daddy and my Jono to be my Jono. And I'm like, that's it. But <clears throat> what I'm circling back around to is 
Paxton and Scott were okay the moment they realized there's room for both of us in her life. But I told them that you were processed correctly. Really? Well, yeah. Can't be sending Cassie's dad back to jail on a technical glitch, right? Thank you, Paxton. I'm blown away. Thank you for everything you do for Cassie. Oh, well. That's my pleasure. We don't have to get into this pissing match over which one of us is going to be a parent in her life or which one of us is going to have her affections. We're getting into Ant-Man and the Wasp now. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how the relationship has changed between Scott and Paxton. Did you pack your soccer shoes? Yeah. All right. Next time I see you, we'll be on the outside. Right. Hey. Oh, get on the inside of this. <laughs> oh, hey, three days, seriously. Proud of you, bud. Thank you. You know what? Give me another one. Thank you. <laughs> you know, this seems hey, funny, but I know. Yeah. I know these families. Do you know these families? Yeah. Okay, that was the thing I was going to ask. I've never seen that before. Yeah. But yeah, I like. Are there blended families that are that close where they're like broing down with each other? And stuff? I've met them. I don't fully understand them. Man, it seems weird. But it's it is a beautiful thing, and I have seen oh, sure. it. And what I do know is that there are couples that, um, when they're no longer couples, they get along better as people and as parents. Right when I don't when I don't need to rely on you to be my romantic partner sure. or to to support me in my life dreams or you know for the million of other little things that couples rely on each other and count on each other to you know when I don't need to when you're just a person in my life and we happen to agree on parenting and we're both doing that well and we agree and on, the, on the one most important thing which yeah. is this kid mm -hmm. and people get along really well. And I've, I am a marriage counselor, so my bias is to try and save the marriage. But there are sometimes the couples are headed for divorce and they're feeling really bleak and hopeless. I'm like, here's something you may not want to hear, but I hope it helps. You two may actually get along better. Right. When you're not in the same roof and when it's all about this person that you both adore. Right. And that is usually, and then the, you know, the step parent brought in um, when you're blending a family as long as there's not this need to prove themselves or the need to take over things, but just actually to blend, like actually blending. Well, and that, uh, this is a good example. We just did a re an episode recently about toxic masculinity. Well, about non-toxic masculinity, Aragorn. Right. That to me seems like that's Aragorn in a blended family, right? Yeah. Hugging people, Who, proud Paxton? of you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could totally see that. Me too, Peanut, yeah. but just wait till next weekend. Once I'm out of here, you and I are gonna go paint this town red. We'll have so much ice cream, we'll never stop puking. <laughs> that truly is dedication, learning close up. How do you do that? How do you do that? <laughs> do you do that? <laughs> Bye. Well, talk about non toxic masculinity. A man holds a skill that I don't hold, and instead of being intimidated, intimidated or, or having to minimize it, How I can think it's that? cool. I like that he doesn't have to be an antagonist at this point in the story. That he can be a character that we love. <laughs> Big takeaways from the Ant-Man series about healthy, blended co-parenting, blended families. It has to be about the kid. Yeah. The arguments and the wars and the battles of the past of the past relationship need to be put to rest because they don't matter anymore. That right. that relationship is gone. It's over. This relationship is now a co-parenting situation. And to do it successfully, you have to put aside your pride, your animosity, any hurt feelings you have towards your ex. That's what a therapist is for. That's what a pastor is for. That's what your girlfriends or your guy friends, like that's what that's for. When it comes to your kid, you are all about supporting that relationship and building up the other parent in their eyes. And if you do that, everybody can just chill the heck out. There's going to be differences from household to household in how you do things, but if you can agree on the big things, then you're in good shape. Who says it's bad for a kid to have a ton of adults that love them, right? Like, it's a yeah. wonderful thing, and it can be a wonderful thing. Now, we don't have time to get into the nitty-gritty today. There's so many things we could talk about when it comes to blended families, and these are guiding principles. For sure. But the Ant-Man films actually do a pretty good job even if they, they oversell the affection between the, the father figures for comedy's sake, yeah. of showing what that healthy adjustment can look like. So, good job, Marvel. Surprise, Marvel made a good movie. <laughs> I'm shocked. A couple good movies. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you would like to rent or own this movie, we have a link down below. You can buy it on Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a link down below for... Free 15-minute consultation with me. Also, you can find us on social media, on Instagram and Twitter at therapy underscore cinema, as well as on Facebook, just under 
Skinema Therapy. That's that would be something else. That's our other show. That's that's After Dark. Also, big deal, YouTube channel, like, subscribe, because you know you want to see these videos as they come up. You want to see them in your feed and go, ooh, a new one from Cinema Therapy. And that was a new voice I'm trying I do out. not assume that you sound like that, <laughs> dear viewer. So until next time, cover your little ones, enjoy the Ant-Man films and the bargain bin spinoff Uncle Woman, and watch, watch movies. movies. It's as good as it's gonna get. My wife's waiting. It's gonna be good. <laughs> All right.